Um, my artist name is Tsunami. Uh, my real life name is Sophia. And I am a producer and DJ. Um, I have been DJing and making music for about six years now. And that does not, um, that comes with a lot of back problems because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sitting at the desk all day. I'm sure you have a lot of clients dealing with the same issues sitting at the desk all day. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So well, let's talk about that. So a little bit of background. How long have you been experiencing this kind of pain? I'm like embarrassed to say, but it's like, it's like years, like literal, oh. like many years of back pain. I'm just like, haven't done anything about it. And no, it's like I, only I, I wouldn't be embarrassed. I mean, I don't, I don't think that's abnormal. Um, studies show that 70 or more percent of the population will have back pain at some point in their life. And most people that I work with, it's usually chronic or repeating back pain. It's not like uh, they had it one time and it just never, you know, it, it's not like it just when it, it happened and it never went away. It's usually repeated incidents of it coming back or flaring up again. Um, so uh, just to screen a few other things, have you had any previous back injuries? Um, not that, not anything that I've like went to the doctor for. I'm pretty sure like one time in 2019, I like fell off a stage and like fell down a flight of stairs and that probably messed me up, but did, I never did, did anything Was that during a performance or after? <laughs> It was after, I think. Okay, okay. It's like, yeah. you gotta continue. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, but I remember, I think I, I caused some, like, real damage to, like, my tailbone because I remember gotcha. being on the flight home and that was, like, it was, like, unbearable to sit. Okay. And I don't think I did anything Do you, for it. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you don't remember if you got any imaging, MRIs, x-rays, nothing? No. Okay. Uh, would you say that's maybe when it stuff started or are you not sure? I think it started, like, in high school, okay. to be honest. What did you do so, in high school? Any activities, any sports? Um, I wasn't like too active in high school. I, I mean, I, I worked out like at the gym, but I wasn't like playing any sports or anything. Okay. Um, and then have you, have you had, besides that one incident, have you had any incidents that you can recall where your back pain was like really severe or had, you know, basically debilitating for like keeping you in bed or anything like that for an extended period I of time? I think it's, it's starting to happen. Like I had a kind of like a bad flare up last summer and then it subsided for a bit, but now it's starting to become debilitating again okay what kind of stuff makes it feel worse positions activities um it oh my god it's like it's like every position i'm in it's just it's just painful so i'll be okay. i'll be sitting and i i think i'd like to think i have pretty good posture you know like i keep my my chin up or and tucked and i my core is aligned <laughs> and I, I try to have good posture um it, it's still really uncomfortable it's painful when i'm laying down Okay. And um, when I'm even when I'm trying to go to sleep, I've tried all different types of ways to like go to sleep. I sleep on my back. I sleep on my side. I am a back sleeper, mm -hmm. but it, um, that's painful. Or and standing up for long periods of time just gets painful. Okay. Um, I should also caveat. Uh, I'm not going to attempt to diagnose or treat any injuries on the court of stream as I'm not seeing you as a patient. But uh, if I do find anything with my line of questioning that I feel like warrants a more detailed medical consult or something, I'll let you know and uh, suggest that who you should go see. But um, generally, the type of pain that you're describing doesn't sound like a traumatic injury to me. Um, are you having any like numbness or tingling? Um, I, I do feel like a little tingling sometimes when it's like really bad. It's like kind of like pins and needles feeling. Where do you feel that? um in the center of my upper center of my back okay so would you say your back pain is more in the upper part of your back or in the lower yeah. part? okay okay um if you have you had any difficulty with like coordination of your hands any of that like just more serious stuff like difficulty grabbing things strength issues in the hands no no okay and then uh when you do feel the pain is it usually as a result of what you're doing, like if you're hunched over for a while or if you're doing something or is it like it'll just randomly happen? Um, I think it, it just is 24 seven. <laughs> OK, OK. Uh, so there's not a lot of fluctuation then. Is it like pretty consistent all day? Yeah. OK. Are there any things that specifically make it feel worse? um uh, maybe if i'm like hunched over like it does okay. feel worse for but then i i am pretty conscious of my um of my posture because of my back pain so i i try mm -hmm. to maintain really good posture 
Okay. So I, I don't think I stay hunched for too long. We'll, we'll talk about posture in a little bit. Um, if anyone who has seen my cons, uh, my content in the past probably understands that my, my philosophy towards posture is probably a little different than what a lot of people would expect. Um, I'm much more a, a proponent of like postural changes rather than having good posture, if that makes sense. But gotcha. we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, do you notice any specific limitations in terms of range of motion in either direction, forward, back, side to side? Um, I tend to feel pretty stiff when I'm like trying to like move side to side. Like, like I, I feel a, yeah, I feel a okay. stiffness. And is the pain like right in the middle or is it kind of set off to one side or the other? I think it's like right in the middle, like on, but on each side, like, uh, gotcha. under my shoulder blades. Okay. Are you working out right now regularly or? I do. Yeah. I, I and that might be a, like a contribution to the pain. Cause I, I do lift heavy, like weights pretty frequently um what parameters are you going for like heavy weight or are you doing like 10 to 12 reps yeah i'm, I'm going in for 10 to 12 reps okay. uh practicing progressive overload right now okay so yeah so more like more like hypertrophy um yeah parameters okay uh do you ever have pain while lifting not while lifting no does it feel better after you lift i think so um i do have a little bit of lower back pain on like really heavy leg days mm -hmm. um but i think that's just like normal Okay. Um, do you work with a trainer or are you just kind of going on your own? Uh, I am by myself. Okay. Uh, I guess this is sort of a, a subjective, but how do you feel about your form? Do you feel like you're pretty confident in how you're lifting mechanics, all that stuff? Or I, I think so because okay. I, I started out with pretty poor form and that um, made my back pain a lot worse. And then I, I, over the years I've corrected my form a lot. Okay. So Good. I don't feel the pain anymore when I'm lifting. So I, I think I have better form now. Cool. And then generally after you lift uh, the next day or so, do you feel any change in your back pain? Um, no, I don't think so. Cause I, I just hit, I hit back yesterday, but mm -hmm. I, I don't really get soreness anymore. Okay. So uh, deadlifts are fine. Rows are fine. All that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you ever feel it? come on um with any specific movements like if you reach out in front of you reach overhead anything like that i think it's like when i'm like twisting it's mostly anything. twisting got it yeah. okay um all right let's do a quick objective test so i'm just gonna basically have you move through a few degrees of motion and see if we can either provoke some pain or find some areas of limitation uh okay. so the first one would be forward and back you're gonna bend forward down like this Okay. And then you're going to extend up like this, all right? Okay. So if you do that, yep. Anything there? Yeah, I feel like a tightness in the center. Okay. And then what about if you arch back and kind of bring your chest towards the ceiling? Anything there? No, that actually kind of provides some relief. Feels kind of good? Okay. Yeah. Um, good. And then now twisting, uh, you're going to cross your arms like this. And you're going to twist oh. and try to keep your hips locked. So you're really trying to rotate through the middle of your back. Okay. Anything there? Mm, no. Okay. And then what about the other way? No. Okay. And then this one is going to be a little awkward, but you're going to tilt to the, or like bend to the side. Yeah. Do you feel anything there? No. And then what about the other way? No. Okay. And what about neck movements? If you turn left and right with your head, do you feel anything there? No. Okay, and then looking up and down. I think when I look down, you feel... I feel like a little tingle. Okay. Um, okay, so so it, you, you have a flexion-based pattern of pain, which generally to me starts to indicate either some disc involvement or some sort of strain of the muscles or tissues. Because you're mentioning a little bit of tingling, I think there's probably some nerve involvement as well. Uh, which generally indicates maybe more of a disc issue that doesn't now that shouldn't like trigger a bunch of red flag like oh no I'm, i have a disc injury it's actually really <laughs> common um disc injuries are super common and a lot of times it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a disc bulge although that's the most likely issue sometimes you can have just what's called discogenic pain meaning that pressure on the disc itself causes some of that discomfort and it's usually a result of either trauma or sustained pressure so in your case i'm guessing it's probably more due to sustained pressure over time which is because of the positions that you're in, you sort of just put weight on that disc all day. It starts- I think to, I'm in that position right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> it starts to create irritability. 
Um, and, and you might even be exacerbating it a little bit because you're so conscious of your lower back position. You might actually be increasing extension here, but then that increases force at the mid back too. So oh, what, oh, what might sense. actually help a little bit, we will have to kind of experiment with this a bit, but is if you slouch a little bit at the lower back, you might actually take some of the force out of the middle of your back. And I know that sounds kind of, you know, counterintuitive, but right. Do you feel it right now? Like just, yeah. Okay. So if you try to slouch, I, I know I'm giving you permission to slouch here. Uh, how does that feel in that spot? Does that change anything? I think it, it does alleviate some of the pressure off like my my lower back, but I think I I I get so like super <laughs> conscious about like oh I have to like overcorrect yeah, uh, my yeah. posture. The, but the, maybe pro that's... the problem with everything is if you go too far in one direction or the other, right? If you yeah. overextend, you actually increase pressure on the joints in your back, the facet joints, mm -hmm. and you also increase tension of the muscles back there. So if they're already tight and they're already kind of irritated, and you keep trying to extend more, you're actually going to create more pressure and more discomfort in a different pattern. Um, this is a, a common issue I see a lot in, uh, in people who lift a lot because we all understand that, you know, when you deadlift, you don't want a rounded back position when you lift right. the weight, but people have gone the other way down. They hyperextend when they lift and that causes a oh. ton of contraction, a ton of irritation at the joints back there. So Maybe. we got to find the middle, right? So usually what I do okay. when I do any sort of lift like that is I fully round my back into flexion and then uh -huh. I fully extend into extension. And then I try to go somewhere in the middle, draw my abs in and try to maintain that neutral position. Yeah. That that's actually, so the idea is to find neutral. The idea is not to be one way or the other. Um, I see. Yeah. In terms of this stuff though, um, the, the way that the thoracic spine works, it's an S curve, right? So if this is the front of your body, your lower back should be curved like this. Your upper back should be curved like this, right? Uh -huh. If you hyperextend here, this has to flex in order to compensate. It's just a mechanical relationship. Like if you yeah. go more neutral here, this can actually straighten out and be more neutral. Similarly, if you round, then this has to round this way too. And it, it kind of it kind of fits, right? It's it's in order to keep you aligned. Your body's always going to try to stack weight vertically over your spine. So you got to think about your lower back as having an influence on your middle and upper back. I see. Um, so something I try to point out to a lot of people, especially gamers that I work with, is if your lower back is rounded, right, and you're resting into a chair like this, you have uh -huh. no choice but to go into this position. Because mechanically, your body weight shifting back forces your head to come forward in order to yeah. counteract it. So if you yeah. straighten out your lower back or you sit like on the front half of your chair and don't use the chair, uh, the chair back, then uh -huh. your lower back straightens out and your head will actually be in a more neutral position. That might take some of the pressure off of here as well. Okay. So like, just like not even like touching the back of my chair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that that's, that's going to take a lot of work. Obviously it takes a lot of core strength, uh, endurance of the extensor muscles, all that stuff. So I usually don't recommend sitting like that for hours and hours at a time. Mm -hmm. Usually what I'll do is I'll do that for a while. Like if I'm playing a game or if I'm working on something for you, right? If you're working on a certain part of your music and you're like, I'm going to spend an hour in this position. When you start feeling fatigued, that's when you shift all the way back and actually just relax again and try to use the back of the chair in okay. order to give yourself sort of a, a break, right? To, to give those muscles a rest. And then alternating back and forth is kind of the goal. Okay. So that's what I was talking about earlier about I don't believe in having perfect posture. What I believe in is you need to have varying posture every hour or two. I see. Um, your body responds really well to movement. It doesn't respond well to being in one position for an extended period of time. Because you can have perfect posture for six hours and it's going to feel pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> probably. It. <laughs> it just doesn't yeah. feel good. You know, it's like anything. It's like even sleeping, right? If you lie down and, and you just lie on your back and you do not move after about 10 minutes, you're really uncomfortable. You're just like, right. I, I have to do so. I have to move. Your body right. does not like to be in one spit position because the pressure, all that stuff, it actually causes um, the pressure will restrict oxygenation of those tissues. And so in order for it to get oxygenated, you have to move. That's why patients who are in the hospital and they're in a vegetable state or something or coma in a coma, they will develop pressure injuries because there's no oxygen or perfusion getting to those mm -hmm. tissues. It will start to die and literally rot. And so you, you have to be constantly giving yourself these little micro breaks. And that's at every level of your body joints, you know, your butt, like when you sit down on your glutes and all that, you're, you're constantly going to shift. And that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. But the important thing is learning to listen to what your body's telling you and then interpreting what that means. Um, I usually think of the go-to exercise you want is full range of motion. So if 
static positions and not moving is the enemy, then what we have to do is go through as much movement, as much range as possible when you have the opportunity. So if you start feeling kind of stiff and achy, you know, you don't want to push through that. That's your opportunity. Okay, 10, spend like 15 or 20 seconds doing a full twist in either direction, going forward and back a few times, you know, neck movements, and just like rolling things out, just moving through as much range as possible. Yeah, in each I, I try to do that, and that does alleviate the pain. Another confession of mine, <laughs> I think this might be like really bad, but it's the only way that it like alleviates the pain is I crack my back so often. I'm that, talking, like, no, 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 no. That's, that's a good thing. So uh, let's get away from demonizing cracking joints. It's actually oh, not okay. bad for you. It's, a, it's good. I, do, I crack my neck, my back all the time. Um, and if you go to a chiropractor or PT and they do manipulations, it's where you crack the joint. Um, yeah. Usually what that indicates is actually that you are really stiff. I think so. I'm yeah. very stiff. Because well, like I, I can crack it like like doing this. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. So so do you know what you did right there? You put yourself into a hyper extended position and it popped. And that's yeah. a, that's just a release of gas bubbles. Usually right after you do that, you'll feel a lot more mobility. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, that, that's the only thing that like helps it. Yeah, and then and that, I that's a good like thing. A yeah. So a lot I of patients that I see in person, if they have a really tight spot right in their spine or whatever, I will do a manipulation in order to crack that one joint. And they'll usually move a lot better. It's temporary, but the idea is that you create that mobility and then try to work into it. So if you crack, that's your opportunity. Okay, now you know. I was really stiff. Now it feels better. You then have to work into that range. So that's when you do a whole bunch of like range of motion movements, try to work into that range. The other yeah. thing is if you're already doing all that and it feels good, perfect. But you need to be doing that more regularly, meaning that you don't start doing this stuff right when you start feeling pain. You need to start doing this stuff early on. Like after one hour, you start doing some stuff. And then after another oh, okay. hour, you do some more stuff. Because the the comparison I have is like for, for a lot of the pro gamers I worked with, they would want to start stretching and stuff after their fourth or fifth game when they're already feeling sore. I'm like, then you're playing mm -hmm. catch up. You know, if you start stretching after your first game and you just keep fresh, you might feel 100% by game three or four rather than feeling like 50%. So Staying, yeah, staying ahead of stuff is way more important than trying to relieve symptoms later. Um, especially given that you're already in a sort of a hyper irritable state right now because your tissues are already inflamed. Um, your threshold for irritability is just significantly lower than where it would be if you just, you know, went, let, let's say, I don't know, you went on vacation for two weeks. You didn't have to do anything. You don't have to touch computer. You don't have to do any of this stuff. You probably come back feeling pretty good, right? Right. So your threshold at that point is much higher for irritation. You could do a lot of stuff that you're doing now and it wouldn't bother you nearly as much as it does right now because your threshold is so low right now. So what we have to do is we have to increase that threshold and we have to increase the capacity. Um, you're already addressing a lot of the stuff I would normally recommend, which is you need to be strength training. You need to be doing all that stuff. Um, add in a little bit more regular mobility. I think warming up with mobility, doing your strength training and then ending with mobility is going to be a really good idea. Yeah, I I don't know if I'm doing the correct stretches cuz I I before I before I start my lift I do dynamic stretching. So okay. anything that Well, like let's go through it. <laughs> what kind of stuff um, do you do? I have So so for upper body, I don't know any stretches, but I all <laughs> all the stretches I know are for lower body, so okay, that may okay. be the culprit. All right, I'll give you some stuff. Um yeah. so we'll focus mostly on the back. But again, if you think about the spine, right, or it, it, honestly, this is a conceptual thing. Any joint in the body, any movement in the body occurs in one of three planes, right? Forward, back, which is sagittal, front, uh, side to side, which is frontal plane. I know that's confusing. And then rotation. So uh, if you can stretch each joint into all three of those planes, you're going to be good. And every muscle kind of functions as a pull in one of those planes. So for you, because we know this position tends to cause your pain. I yeah. would advise working against that. So you're going to be doing like overhead reaches, you know, five or 10 of those. And what I look for when I, when I assess people uh, in person for this kind of stuff is if you look at the mm -hmm. curvature of my back, right? Look, look at mm -hmm. the line of my spine here. You want to look, I'm going to try to get lined up here. Look how gradual of a curve that is, right? Yeah. Most people will hinge. You'll see like a, a 90 degree hinge here right. or like a hinge right at the upper part of their lower back. Mm -hmm. um that is essentially all of the weight that should be shared by the spine going to one joint so your goal when you th the reason i point that out is your goal is to try to create a gentle curve of your spine as you extend okay. and usually if in your case what i imagine is you're so stiff through these 
middle to upper verte vertebral segments, you're not going to bend very much there. So yeah. uh, one, th one thing that might help is putting a foam roller like lengthwise this way and using it as a fulcrum so you can bend around it and you can just work your way up the spine like at each segment. Dude. Okay. I also foam roll and I also use the Theragun, but it's like- Yeah, so, <laughs> but you use the foam roll to roll out muscle and you use the Theragun right. to work out muscle. I want you right. to use the foam roller to work your joints. I've never heard of that. Yeah, yeah. I don't, uh, let me, I have, yes, all right. All right, so you're gonna position this this way, right? Like vertically, oh, or like this horizontally, uh -huh. and then uh -huh. you're gonna be lying on your on the ground, right? So imagine I'm right. horizontal. You're gonna right. arch over it like this, yeah, and just do mobilizations at each level, and then work your way up your back. Okay. Right. The important thing is keeping your butt down, keeping your abs tight, so you yep. create a fulcrum or a pivot point around the foam roller. Now, okay. if you do that regularly, you're gonna have a lot more mobility at each of those segments as you work your way up. And then after you do that, you create that passive mobility. Then you work actively into it and try to use that new range. Okay. Um, and then also show you, this is actually what I call the greatest stretch in the world. This is like the, the do that covers everything, right? So let me adjust this down. There's Kumi. Hi Kumi. All right. <laughs> so you're going to lunge opposite hand down reach down, reach up, and rotate. And the idea here is to get your hands as far apart as you can, not Wait, reaching I'm, backwards. Try this. Yeah, you're trying to go like to the ceiling. Okay? okay, you're gonna create a lot of rotation through the middle and upper part of your back, as well as a great stretch of the hip flexors. So I lunge. Uh-huh, and then, uh, so if you're left, yeah, there you go, and then reach down. So don't go backwards, reach for the ceiling, reach up. There, do you feel that twist through the middle of your back? I do. Good. Nice. Okay. And then, and well, then you're going to switch. You're going to switch yeah. to the other hand. So this is the, this, I call this the greatest stretch in the world because you're stretching almost everything at once. You're not only getting mobility of the spine, you're getting a good glute stretch on the, on the, uh, the leg that's forward. You're getting a hip flexor stretch on the leg that's back. You're getting some scapular retraction. You're getting some chest stretch. Um, I like yeah. to turn my head to follow the hand. That way you're also rotating the cervical spine to follow the thoracic movement. Um, yeah, that's that's like my go-to. If you could do that every morning, like 10 times on each great. side, you're going to feel pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm terrible at that. I'm terrible <laughs> at I'm always <laughs> reminded because when I wake up in the morning, the first thing that happened is Kumi jumps on me and then like licks my face. And right after that, he jumps off the bed and he stretches. And so that's like, what oh, dogs okay. do every time they get up right they they wake up and they stretch they go do they do this one and then he does this one and then he's good to start his day <laughs> um so use that as a reminder you know i think animals know a lot uh when you get up first thing you should do is assess your range of motion right just go through full range see how you feel warm up a little bit and then go about your day it takes all of 10 seconds but I like, immediately <laughs> feel looser after just doing yeah like, exactly yeah. and so so i i try to think of this stuff as like ongoing mobility is all about frequency not intensity right if okay. you could stretch once every three hours throughout the day you don't have to spend 20 or 30 minutes stretching you know it takes you like 15 seconds to just go through full range of motion mobility yeah. but you do that throughout the day you're gonna have so much more mobility overall and it's just gonna feel looser all the time um i yeah, actually think I the bigger problem is when people do all their stretching like right after they work out and that's it and the rest of the time in their day that's like 23 and a half hours of their day they don't do anything like mm -hmm. that that's not that's not ideal see yeah so to summarize i think a lot of your issues right now because you're already it's because you're already addressing so many of these other things already um your major issue right now is that you're stiff and you're hypomobile and you're not really uh doing things to offload tissue that's irritated so discs, the way they work, they generally are. Yeah, what is a disc? I don't know what a disc <laughs> I should explain this earlier, but so yeah. a little bit of anatomy. Uh, vertebral bodies are, you know, the bones, right? And they're stacked like that. In between okay. each of them is a disc. And a disc is essentially connective tissue or cartilage. And imagine a jelly donut, right? So you have the harder outside and you have a squishier inside. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens when you squeeze on one end of that? The, the jelly goes this way, right? So it bulges yeah. out the other side. That's what usually causes disc bulges. 
So if you think about the anatomy of the disc, when you're constantly like this, all of your pressures on the front half of the disc, it starts to create pressure backwards. And okay. so those disc bulges tend to bulge back into the nerve roots, into the canals that the nerves run out of. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what causes some of that numbness and tingling. So the way that you offload that or you take pressure off is you extend. Now you've shifted pressure to the back of the disc or the back of the disc, uh, I should say the back of the vertebral body because the vertebral body is not just a piece of bone. It's bone, but then it has joints on the back. So that's the, the bumpy part of your spine you feel is the spinous process, mm -hmm. right? So those actually have e each level of your vertebral column has two joints that sits on top of the other two joints below it. So when you start putting pressure backwards like this, you're actually putting pressure on those joints, which leverages that vertebral body up and that lifts pressure off of the disc. Okay. So by doing that, now you can imagine like, you know, like, a, like it's like a straw effect. It's a negative pressure gradient. So when you take something like a, a package, right? Toothpaste, for example, and you squeeze it this way and it opens up, it pulls back in, right? That's what you're right. trying to do with that, that bulging disc material, the nucle nucleus pulposa. You're trying to uh -huh. pull it back into the disc, essentially. Okay. All right. So for you, when you start feeling pain, what's going to help a lot is just these guys, like overhead reach with an extension, trying to actually lift your chest, trying to bend your spine slightly backwards. And it just do, do like, yeah, hold for a second or two, but you want to do like five to 10 of those. And that's going to relieve a lot of the immediate irritation. And then you maintain that by throughout the day, just maintaining mobility, all that stuff. I see. Okay. Are any of the lifts I'm doing causing more harm? <laughs> that was literally about to be my next thing. Yes. Um, yeah. So it's not that they're causing harm. You just have to be aware of what's going to cause it to feel worse. Right. So okay. uh, the ones that I would think are probably most provocative would be a deadlift or a row. And which is why I specifically asked about those two. So I don't with, deadlift, with, but I I do I do a lot of rows, like cable rows at least. Okay, so that's like a staple in my back routine. Why Why don't you deadlift? Um, because lower back issues. <laughs> I am I'm scared the, of fucking it up. Yeah, sure, sure, and that that makes sense. But if you were to deadlift twenty pounds, do you think you're gonna mess your back up? No. <laughs> right. So so what that says is it's not the movement that's wrong. It's the weight tolerance or your form changing when you try to go heavy. It's my ego, I think. Exactly. No, and I have the same problem. Believe me, I've thrown yeah. my back so many times deadlifting over the course of the years. Uh, but every time I just have to remind myself, okay, you, you have to have control of the weight. So when you deadlift, it should look identical, whether it's 10 pounds or 180 pounds. Doesn't matter, right? The form Fair. should be identical. So the things that you need to look out for that are unanimous with deadlifts, rows, any sort of pulling motion is that when you are in the down position, you are not letting it pull you into flexion. Oh, really? Yeah. Because, well, like the, the middle of your back rounding, because you probably, you're probably really good about keeping this part engaged. Cause that's how I started. Cause I, I, I thought that was like, <laughs> I thought that's how you're supposed to start for like retraction. It's like, you like start like rounded and then you. No, <laughs> that's going to be really irritating for you. Um, oh, okay. So what I think of is the spine should be its own piece and then the arms are moving on their own. So the shoulder blades do want to protract, retract, but you should yeah. be able to do that motion with no front to front to back change in your spine, right? Okay, so this you're keeping your, your spine straight. Yeah, I can fully protract my shoulder blades while keeping my spine straight. I'm still getting a full stretch of all these muscles but yeah. now I'm not allowing for the weight to pull me into flexion and then cause irritation at that spec at that segment. Mm, so okay. that's really, really important. Um, I see that a lot with people, especially with deadlifts, because when it's really heavy, they might have great low back position. You look at their shoulders and they're like this. Yeah. Right? And that's immediately putting all that flexion into your mid thoracic area. Okay. So always think like retracted slightly or engaged, like keeping the shoulder blades in neutral lifting with everything at once. Yeah, don't don't dead hang weight. I see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I do that a lot. I yeah. Think. And and that that applies to a lot a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. curls, all that stuff, right? If you're curling and you're and you're like this, you're you're yeah. gonna feel that as well. So I I would probably avoid preacher curls. Um, generally when you do preacher oh, curls, yeah. <laughs> I I, can, I already have like a checklist of things in my head that you're probably doing. So when you do preacher curls, generally because you have to be over the thing, you're already you're in a flex position doing your biceps. 
And so you can do it, but you have to pull your shoulder blades back. You got to keep your back straight as you do it. Oh man, that yeah. explains so much. Cause I preacher curls are probably like the only curls that I do. Cause I just like, <laughs> it's like so good for like bicep isolation. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah. I will give you a trick, drop your weight, do dumbbell curls. Um, but keep your elbow in front of your shoulder and your shoulder blade retracted. If you do bicep curls in this angle, yeah, it, like almost a slight forward angle, you're going to yeah. feel your biceps kick in so much harder. Uh, okay. Like you, you could probably drop your weight in half. Like you'll, I mean, I'll do, I'll do these with like, normally I, I mean, if I'm going super heavy, I could do probably 45, 50 pounds. Yeah. I, when I do these, I'll go like 20 to 25, maybe like yeah. it, it's just way more isolated because you're changing the leverage from behind your elbow to in front. And that's how the See, biceps operates. Yeah. So bring, bring my elbow forward. Yeah. So instead okay. of doing a preacher, just use your other hand and yeah. like pull your shoulder blade back and do curls yeah. like this. And you're going to feel your biceps way more isolated, but you got it. Okay. You got to pull the shoulder back. Yeah. That's that yeah. thing. Cause then that'll save your, your mid back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's um, cool. so the, the reason I try to educate on, on like concepts like that, right? Like understanding what you what you're intent to do with your back in relation to the shoulder blades is you can troubleshoot all of your own exercises now. Anything right. you do, you want to be thinking, is my back in a neutral position and is it separate movement from what my arms or my shoulder blades are doing? Yeah, I okay. might be having some issues when I'm doing like my lat pull downs as well, because maybe because I'm like, maybe I'm like way too like curved so out doing the that. Two, yeah, let's talk about lat pull downs. Two, two issues I generally see with lat pull downs, people hunch and they do this. And yeah. the, the telltale sign is their shoulders end up higher than when they start. Your shoulders should always end lower than when you start. Yeah, absolutely. And then the other thing is, uh, if you lean back, which is fine, uh, you just want to keep your back straight and then you just, you're changing the line of pull essentially. Yeah. So leaning back isn't bad. It's actually good. The cue that I like to give people is don't think about pulling your hands back. Think about bringing your elbows to your hips. Yeah. 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 Chest to the bar. I don't even, I don't even think that. Cause then what happens is inevitably you'll see this occur, right? Mm. So if the line of pull is this way, your forearm should always be in line with the cable. It should never, ever change angles. So when you pull down, the elbows are guiding. And I always think just bringing your elbows low, you're going to feel your lats kick in way more, right? Your hands are just hooks. Like none of this matters. What right. you're really trying to do is move your elbow because yeah. that's what actually connects to the muscle like the, the humerus i see <laughs> yeah the, so conceptually it's just again separating shoulder blade movement separating arm movement from trunk movement like being okay. able to to localize those two things is really important okay 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 so now now what can i do besides like you know like more frequent mobility besides that what can i do for like if i'm just having like a really bad flare up like what will get rid of it like so instantly? so number one would be these guys the extensions yeah um two you could probably try uh planks planks yeah the the main oh, reason <laughs> the main reason Maybe. is yeah you, you'll get some core <laughs> activation but again when you're in that plank position again imagine i'm horizontal uh yeah. if you start fatiguing you're gonna default to this right? yeah so that's already sort of a position of relief or for comfort for your issue. Um, yeah. I really like planks for that. And it's, it's mostly about, again, isometric holds, uh, creating postural control and endurance. That's going to translate a lot better to what you're feeling. A lot of what you're feeling can be attributed not to like an injury, but your brain not liking the position you're in. And so it creates pain as a mechanism of telling you, mm -hmm. you need to change this. It, it's not that you were like, damaging tissue it's more like you, your brain is trying to tell you hey i don't like this anymore you need to do something different so learning to respond to that is usually identifying the position you're in and doing the opposite okay okay yeah and i honestly think with with all the stuff that we went over right now uh addressing the irritation that you're probably exerting on it when you're working out uh addressing some of the habits throughout the day and and thinking about ways of relieving it you're going to probably resolve about 90% of this very quickly within the next few weeks because you're working at it from both ends. Not only are you learning how to reduce the pain, you're also learning how to avoid making it worse throughout the day. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. It's that everyone recovers as they sleep or whatever, right? 
but generally that rate of recovery needs to exceed the rate of stress accrual. And if you're adding more stress every day than you're recovering, then over time that builds up. And so what we need to do is reduce how much you're irritating it throughout the day. And it's going to heal on its own essentially. Okay. So just to, just to recap, it's not bad that I crack my back like every no. five minutes. No, okay. it, that's usually an indication that you are stiff and you need to do that. Now, as you start doing more of this mobility stuff throughout the day, you might not need to crack your back as often. Okay. Yeah. Damn, should I like sign up for yoga? Should I? Should <laughs> I mean, I if you, like, if you enjoy, Pilates? here's what I tell everyone, if you enjoy it, you know? Yeah. There's no, there's no solution. I mean, if you do everything I told you, you're doing all these stretches throughout the day, you don't really need yoga. You just are doing essentially what you want out of the yoga throughout your day. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, I I generally just think do what you enjoy and find ways of like just making more habit formation throughout the day. Um, I have a habit of like, you know, whenever I stop at a red light, I, I just like just crack my neck essentially or like turn my head each way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing that all day, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, so just like yeah. add little habits here and there. Yeah, Okay. I should like set a timer like or like alarms. Yeah, the day. I mean, on it, well, I think that's a good idea when you're working, right? If you're working on music, I know you can get into a flow state or you can get into a point where yeah. you're not thinking about anything like time. Uh, then having a timer sometimes helps a bit. Yeah. Um, but then again, it's also dependent on like, if you feel like it disturbs your workflow, you know, there's a trade off there. Uh, yeah, my I think my issue is like exactly what you said. Like I, I wait till I... I'm in so much pain. Then that's when I start like, okay, I just yeah, now, and then know? it's and then it's too late. And then you're playing catch up. You're trying to like yeah. figure it out. Um, you could also maybe have the habit of doing all your stretches, doing like sort of like a, a physical meditation type thing before you start doing stuff. Yeah. So you're you're getting yourself as mobile and as loose as possible, and then you don't have to worry quite as much about okay, if I get into a groove and I'm just like vibing and I'm I'm making music for two straight hours, maybe that's fine because I already pre-stretched. Yeah. And then after you feel tired and you're like, okay, I had a good point in this and I can take a break. That's when you can do it again. Gotcha. Yeah. That might also help okay. too. That's something I use a lot with uh, a lot of the pros is mental state as a result, as a, as it relates to physical state mm -hmm. and, and routine and habit and ritual is really important. So um, the example I would use is like every gamer at a high competitive level knows when they hit flow state, like everything just clicks. Right. And I'm sure in musicians, musicians too, you kind of get set. Sometimes you get it. Sometimes you don't. Yeah, but exactly. I think ritual preparations for things will help you be more consistent in achieving those states. So if you have like, you probably have routines you're, you're like barely aware of, like, oh, in order for me to write really well today, I have to like have tea and I have to like eat something first and I have to go for a walk yeah, and then yeah. I, then I can get into my state. Right. That's what it is. Your brain is really good at using little external like rituals in order to get itself into the right state in order to do something and so I you see. could add you know exercises stretches stuff like that into that program like okay i'm gonna make tea i'm gonna do my stretches i'm gonna like take a few deep breaths you know meditate for a minute like 30 seconds whatever and then i'm yeah. gonna just go and do my thing and the more consistently yeah. that happens okay. now i'm feeling yeah. like a burning like it just like it just happens it random, random, yeah okay it just, so like so try Weird. try doing some extensions right try bringing the chest up try going uh, when you when you go up, try to also pull your neck back because the neck moving back will also create extension at the lower at uh, the upper part of the back. Yeah, and see, I've only sat for like thirty minutes, and I'm already feeling burning. But like, your irritability is just high, and the other thing is, if it gets really irritated, if you're just having a tough day, you can always yeah. ice it for like ten minutes. Yeah, and then and then do stretches again after that. The ice is just like a good way to just knock out some of the irritation and numb the area, and then you want to move after that when you have more range yeah okay cool any I other just, questions i know i went over a ton of information um hopefully you, you understood at least conceptually a lot of what i was going over i do like, yeah okay. basically i'm not moving enough yeah yeah this stuff is actually very simple it's just hard because the most important part is consistency okay and so you you don't the other thing is don't beat yourself up just focus on consistency if you have a day where you oh, i forgot to do my stretches a lot don't worry about it like okay just do more later and then over time, those habits become more and more routine. You're not going to think about it as much. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Gotcha. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Like, uh, just shoot me a message in a week or so. Let me know if it's changing or not. And okay. we'll see. I, I, I think I'm it's going to keep yeah. doing the, the stretch. Yeah. The... Do that one every day. I think it's going to change significantly. So 
um just let me know you know if it's going well even right like hey in a week if you're like oh i feel a lot better i feel a lot more mobile okay. let me know so that i can give you progressions too okay okay yeah cool all Love right it. well yeah thanks for spending some time on the stream with me i hope uh, other people got some out of this <laughs> no thank yeah. you for troubleshooting yeah yeah all right again i don't think you're injured i think you just have some tissue irritation you probably need to just have better habits about okay i'm gonna right. i'm gonna start stretching more awesome <laughs> All right. And yeah, I will talk to you soon then. Take care. All right. Peace. Bye. Thank you.